G'day van fam and welcome back to another episode. When you last left us, we had just finished, well, tried to finish the gib. We no. just failed to finish the gib. We didn't survive the gib. The gib got us. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come into the outside of Broome. We're at a place called Roebuck at the moment. Yep. And we waited to get a new starter motor. And that took about a week. A week uh, and a half, like, yeah. to get the part and then get it fitted. Because it had to get shipped up from Perth. So we had intended to go back up and finish the Gib River Road, but what happened? We had unseasonable wet weather, which unfortunately closed the Gib. So everyone was in room, like, either going or coming or leaving. Or yeah, so it's been so busy here. It really caused us quite a few dramas <laughs> because all these people that had intended to come up and do the Gib in the dry season ended up being stuck in Broom, so all the caravan parks and everywhere were full so we've been shuffling backwards and forwards between caravan <laughs> parks on the outskirts of Broome as you can see right now we're we're on a highway it's quite noisy which is quite unpleasant we're getting woken up by the road trains coming through the smells of the cattle uh, as they're driving past we couldn't we couldn't afford to stay in Broome because it's just too expensive what do they call it unseasonal rate rises for yeah. this season and not to mention they're booked out anyway yeah, we couldn't we couldn't afford to do it unfortunately but anyway long story short <laughs> we have run out of time to finish the gib river road so we're all packed up we're ready to get out of dodge we're going to go up and we're going to check out the dampier peninsula so let's get hitched up and uh get started get on the road So, we're going today, we're heading up to the Dampier Peninsula. There's a bunch of free camps up there. We honestly don't know where we're staying or where we're going, but we'll just hop on wiki camps and find out where we're going. Look, Mel, van cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> we don't see many of those. I'm glad it's not a short trip. It gives me a chance to do some drawings. <laughs> Kaylee got a little bit sick and tired of the backwards and forwards we had to do around Broome, which is five minute drives between the uh, Broome Gateway and the Roebuck where we were staying. But we have formulated a plan, we know where we're going now. We were looking at the free camp, there's Bard, there's Bard Creek, there's James Price Point, some Kwandong points, and um, we were checking the reviews and they didn't look super crash hot. There was lots of complaints about the sand flies and the mozzies. There was another complaint, and I don't know if this is true or not, but there was another complaint saying that uh, Broomshire is deemed it no longer a free camp and if the ranger comes out they'll find you as well. So between all of those things, we decided to stuff it. We're gonna push right up towards the top of the Dampier Peninsula. We're gonna to head to a place that's been on my bucket list for a long time. We're gonna to head to a camp called Smithy's Camp. All right, we've reached the turn off for Smithy's Road. That was a lot of long straight road, wasn't it? It was all bitumen, <laughs> which was nice, but now we've hit the lovely red dirt and we've got some corrugations maybe. Yeah, 43 kilometers of rough conditions according to Wikicamp. So we're gonna air down and then we'll get going and try and find our way out to Smithy's. All right, we've run with 40 on the caravan, 35 in the rear of the car, and 25 on the front. After we did the, um, the Gib River Road, I felt like we were bulging a little bit more than I expected. So I'm just running slightly higher pressures than we ran on the Gib, and we'll see how that goes this time. She said I'm a free man, free to do just what I like, but I just don't seem to like what's new to me. Now I'm no one's man And these streets that I've been walking They make me feel like nothing I tell my friends it's here where we begin I say I'm better than I've ever been It's like an enemy's that's caving in I've never been this messed up Oh, every day's a one step forward And a three steps back when I'm a free man again Alrighty, so this is the skinny little one-way road in. The information on uh, Wiki Camps told us that you should come in after 12 because that way people that are leaving can clear out and then after 12 it ends up going in with traffic. So we've timed it, we're about 1.30 now so we should be sweet. And Mel's behind the wheel so I could get that beautiful drone footage that we just watched. Yes, because how's my drone flying going, darling? Not great. You do, dear? Put that away. <laughs> I got stuck. Not badly. We just need a we just need a lower pressure. We're too high. So I don't know. Twenty all around. Sure. <laughs> First drive on the beach in a while. I get stuck. Guys, take two. All 
Oh, are you serious? How bloody good is this? We are right on the beachfront. Um, funny story, when we were checking in, Mel's like, oh, we'll just pay for two days. I don't, what if we don't like it? I don't know if we want to stay any longer. I think we might be here for two bloody months. Have a look at this. <laughs> and we've arrived. Everyone's got their tinnies up on the beach. They're all filleting all the fish they've been catching all day. How good is that? As you know, we have just gotten rid of our tinny just in time to hit places like this. But we have just picked up a brand new boat. It's an inflatable and I'm going to have a crack at putting it together. And that's how we do it. Alright, it is 3.29 right now so we'll see how long it takes us to put the boat together for the first time. One minute in, is it thirsty work? I've undone two buckles, that's perfect timing. <laughs> this might end up taking two hours. <laughs> Little bugger has asked me about probably 20 times if he can pump up the boat. Itch. Looks like this is going to be a team effort, hey Mel? Yeah, let's just look at the manual so we know how much to blow it up to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's only slightly I don't, like concerning. It's definitely a workout. I reckon uh, a compressor might go well. <laughs> so Alright, we're at the finishing stages. Come over here with the camera, Mel. You can see down here, there's a little pressure gauge on the, the pump. So I have to take it up to 0.6 for the floor. And I took the two, uh, two tubes on the side to 0.25. So. That's how we know that we've got it at the right pressures. And towards the end, once you've got it full of pressure with the pump, it is pretty hard work. Like this is a workout. I'm definitely feeling it through here. It's the maiden voyage. We swapped over to GoPro Mo. We're gonna drag this bad boy down into the water. We're gonna give her a run and push. Oops, <laughs> took some water. back we were able to pull it all the way up that massive tide all by ourselves so i'm going to call that a win definitely a lot easier than dealing with the old big tinny successful first outing it worked it floated are you happy dear i did get soaked but <laughs> you're hardly even wet where are you soaked quick soaked dry. quick dry I'm yeah not dry that down. quickly <laughs> she loves to have a whinge this one i'll tell you what all right we're not going to film much more today. I think we're going to have a rest big day. We'll see you tomorrow and hopefully we'll go out and try and catch a fish here. Daddy, look, I made it. See? I made a little bath. Yeah. Is this going to be a little hermit crab run? Yeah, I'm making a seat here. <laughs> what a bloody spot. Good morning, everyone plan this morning and this is Mel's plan mind you is to go on a shell hunt but where do you reckon Mel is I give you a guess I give you a guess hey Mel we're going on a shell hunt going on a shell hunt time to get out of bed is everyone, time to get out of is bed, everyone bed? Have you had your the coffee? kids have had breakfast I've had coffee they're right. all dressed and ready Get dressed. Well, might found something. Oh, it's all intact. Big one. <laughs> Look at that. Does it have anything in it? No. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I'll go clean it out. Camp's just up there, so not even too far away from camp. So that's really cool. So excited, big shell. It's pretty much perfect. A little bit of damage up in here. There's nothing living in it. Wow. Happy days, you happy with that? Happy days, yeah. Look at the beautiful colours on here. I guess when it's all the red sand and stuff. It's beautiful. Yeah, it might have been. That might wash off, I'm not sure. Yeah, that that will wash off. <laughs> there you go. Is that what you're looking for? Yep.
Thought I'd take this chance while we're walking away. You can see camp back there. We told you a few times yesterday that we were coming into a place called Smithy's Camp. But I've got to say, this is nothing like what I expected. I knew we were going to have access to the beach to launch the boat, but I had no idea we were going to be camping right on the beach. This one's got to go down as one of my favorite ever camps. It is just stunning. Beautiful, clean sand, lovely water straight out there. But we were talking to some of the people that have been camping here for longer than us. And they told us that um, you weren't allowed to camp on the beach initially, but it's just as the camp got a bit busier during school holidays, they then opened up the beach to camping. So might just want to let you know that you might come here expecting to get on the beach and maybe they won't have it open. It might only be when they're really busy. So perhaps time your uh, camps for school holidays. <laughs> Not a bad spot to be during school holidays. It's busy, but it doesn't feel bad. Massive party atmosphere. We ended up uh, sitting by the fire last night with our neighbours and having a few too many drinks. Is that about right, Mel? That's about right. And, and um, don't forget, if you come here, don't expect facilities to be... They're like a half a star. They're pretty horrid, actually. <laughs> they're awful. They're awful. They've got to be one of the worst facilities we've ever been to. Like, the shower's freezing cold, the toilets stink. No toilet paper, so everyone's walking up with their own. So it's not the greatest for that, but the camp is... You're not coming here for the facilities, is what we're trying to say. Don't come expecting some luxury facilities. But look, especially at 40 bucks. The a toilets night. function <laughs> and they flush, so we don't have to fill up our cassette. So it, it has that going for it. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought I'd take this chance to give you guys a bit of an update or a bit of information about Smithy's Camp. Did we say it was 40 a night? Yeah, 40, 40 a night. But a night. that cash only. Cash only. And that's also hit and miss. Some other campers have been charged more. Some other campers have been charged. Um, 25 per person instead of 20 per person so they might be in the process of trying to jack up the price as well but it is it was a bit hit and miss they did $20 a night for us but we heard others that were charged 25 a night that's what I got. it's like a perfect shell it's not even a crack on it it's gorgeous look at that <laughs> Alright guys, I got a heap of positive feedback about the budget meals that we were sharing on the Gib. So I thought I'd continue the tradition and share a new budget meal that we've created. We're up here on the Dampier Peninsula for about two and a half weeks, so we have had to get a bit creative. And I came up with this idea and we've tried it a couple times, it's been fantastic. We bought one of those massive bulk packs of sausages, 24 packs of sausages. We just cook up a few sausages on the barbecue. I'll take you inside and I'll show you the rest of the uh, situation, the rest of how, how this awesome budget meal gets put together. And my Mel in there, she's just working, no rest for the wicked, hey? <laughs> None. So in here we've got a bit of Coles budget, oh, Coles pre-done shredded coleslaw mix. Uh, and the sauce is just sour cream, mayonnaise, a, a squeeze of lemon, mix that all together and then mix all the uh, coleslaw together. And then we just put them on wraps and make kind of a would you call it a burrito? It's not quite a wrap, is it? It's kind you of fold like up a the sausage, bottom. a sausage without bread. <laughs> yeah, well, breadless sausage, which breadless. which is awesome because we are uh, not able to get bread out this way and bread will go bad in a day or two. That's right, and there's so, no space for it in our tiny fridge, so. I, look, I should show you just how many packets of wraps we're able to take, or we have taken. So we live on wraps. They tell you that uh, wraps are a caravan's friend. And they aren't lying, but I'll show you these getting put together. Oh, perfect timing, son. Mm. Can I give you your lunch? Yes. You take that outside and eat it? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Uh, can, can you bring up anything? You absolutely can, thank you. But, okay. <laughs> if that's what you want to do. You can take that one to get... Alright, I'll tell you what, I'll do it so it doesn't end up covered in sand. No, not that one. <laughs> it looked like it was gonna, mate. Lunchtime. What's the bet? They'll finish that and be like, I'm hungry still. <laughs> These kids eat like weeds. You can have them usually by after you finish, mate. You hungry? Yep, starving. Starving, Marvin. I'm hungry. They starving, Marvin. Here you go, Dale. There's more where that came from. <laughs> Thank you. No taste test. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> 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 
Hey, eh? we get to come out here and look at this for a view while we eat lunch. This is living, Barry. I tell you what, <laughs> it honestly doesn't get much better than this. So we've just had lunch. We are going to take the boat out today. First time in the day. Should be exciting. Nervous, yes. No sounder, so that'll be interesting. We'll see how we go. We'll let you know. Mel reckons she can put it in herself. You gonna try? I'm off, kids. No, mum's on her own, mate. That's probably not the way I would do it. Yeah, hold, hold this down. <laughs> how would you do it, sweetheart? So we'll see if I can put it in my, by myself, which is what I am most excited for about this boat. Being able to do it by myself. How is that? Ready to roll? Ready to roll. Yo. other boat the boat doesn't get hot which is really nice so it's really cool to sit on <laughs> but <laughs> this one's all right <laughs> just put Kaylee at the helm while we're trolling we've been at it now for an hour still nothing Nada. all these people at camp saying oh yeah we went trolling we caught this and that not happening for us but we are fishing blind without a sounder which definitely makes it hard it's a learning curve isn't it I just think we might have to Fishing with rod and line without a sounder is just not very easy. It might be a thing we don't do as often, Mel. Won't that make you upset? Hey, we can take the boat out and explore. Well, we've just been trolling for an hour. No luck. A bit over an hour. A bit over an hour. Maybe next time only half an hour. <laughs> Mel's, Mel's not the hugest fan of trolling. No, I don't so like can trolling. Can we stop now? Can we stop now? I think if you come out to fish, you fish. Trolling just seems like lazy fishing. <laughs> Anyway, we're swapping over. We're going to try a bit of bait fishing, so we got some pilchards and some squid. We're going to drop that down to the bottom in this vast desert and see if anything happens. Is that more your style, Mel? This this the kind of fishing you prefer, is it? <laughs> Just bigger. Another one of these. Alright guys, we've now been here for a bit over two weeks. We've been using the inflatable just about every day. So I feel like I'm in a pretty good position to take you for a bit of a walk around, talk about the boat and tell you what we think about it. So the boat is a true kit discovery. It's an inflatable catamaran. They come from New Zealand. 
and we picked it up with the package that came with a few extras so we picked it up with the bridle that came with it so this is how i'm getting it in and out of the water came with some of the other extras like the railblazer mount on the um, transom here these railblazer mounts i believe are standard we also purchased a couple of uh rod holders to go with it extra and in the package one of the biggest and most important things that came with it are these quick lock wheels so these pop on and off the transom really easily they fold up when we're on the water and obviously they're in the downward position there so that we can roll it in and out of the water so the discovery package for us cost us about four and a half grand in New Zealand dollars and then when you convert that back to Australia and it's slightly cheaper but we did get a little bit surprised when we tried to bring it into Australia from New Zealand that we got hit with the duty tax as well. So there was an extra $700 on it there. So if you're thinking about getting one of these from New Zealand, then at least you will be aware of it and not caught off guard like we were. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about some of the positives and negatives. So I'll start with the positives. It's, um, it's only 45 kilos which means I can now store this on the roof of the car. If you remember last week, we had about 60 odd kilos spare on our axle weight. So we should still be legal on our axle weights and definitely still well and truly within our gross vehicle mass whilst including this in our setup. So if you're um, on, the, on the edge and maybe you can't fit a tinny into your equation due to your weights, you might be able to do something like this. The other huge advantage I think is that it's not going to be covering our solar panels anymore. I'll put a little b-roll scene in right now and show you where I've got it stored. But the tinny used to go over the top of our solar panels, whereas now with this thing on the roof, our solar panels are still exposed to the sun, so they're still going to be generating power, which is another great thing. Some of the other positives we can talk about, the fact that I can get it in and out of the water on my own. I can spin this around and run it into the beach and take it out, and then I can pull it back up all on my own. Whereas with the old tinny, that was a problem. We would have to use the car. We couldn't, literally couldn't do it, even with all four of us working together. It was just too heavy to pull up and down the beach on our own. So huge advantage is that I can get it in and out of the water on my own, which means that we're just more likely to use it. Because when it's easy to use, you're just more likely to use it. Uh, it is very capable. We showed you the first couple of outings in this boat. Um, that we took when we got here and we didn't have the best conditions for those it was quite choppy out there But we didn't feel worried at all. This is a very capable boat It's definitely not going to be sinking out there if you take a little bit of water on board It's got a self-clearing scooper what that means basically is any water that comes on board will travel straight through it down to the rear and out through this scooper at the back so no water staying on board which makes it ideal for oceanic conditions which is something that we're going to be doing a hell of a lot of whilst we're here on the uh, west australian coast it's got a plate oh, i just looked on the plate just now and it's plated to take six passengers so that's a massive amount of people so we can take some friends kids and our kids out so it's going to be really cool it's a really fun toy um, that may well be about all of the positives performance wise when we were out cruising we were able to cruise at about 15 knots pretty comfortably i could go full tilt and i was hitting 18 knots but um the whole thing wobbles a little bit and it's not quite comfortable at that sort of pace so 15 knots is about our cruising speed which is a pretty good speed you can still cover some ground at that pace but let's talk about some of the negatives uh, obviously it's an inflatable and in next week's video you'll see that we caught a really big fish and we ended up putting a hole in the floor whilst we were quite a long way out to shore so i'm now sporting a couple uh patches which is quite disappointing and we've had to basically have a rethink or i've had to have a rethink and um I've decided that I certainly won't be targeting big fish anymore out of this boat because that's just way too risky. Uh, big fish, they're just too hard to handle, they've got lots of teeth, lots of spines and um, obviously they can do some damage to this boat. So like, it's fine for fishing for smaller things like squid and for smaller fish like that, that, that won't be a problem but I'll, I'm no longer going to go out and try and target larger fish because um, I don't really want to put any more holes in this thing. The other negatives are that you get wet, um, you get a lot more water onto the boat. So 
as passengers we're all getting wet whilst we're out using it the other problem is my fishing rods and things like that they're also all getting wet so i'm gonna have to invest in some tackle guard and i'm gonna have to start washing and cleaning my rods and reels a lot more regularly as well so that's a bit of a negative storage wise even though it's four meters which is bigger than the old tinny which was 3.7 we just have a lot less storage so you can see that the um, cats or the these things here i'm not sure what we call them they take up quite a good chunk of the boat and you've only got this small little space in here for your gear you can see just the petrol tank alone is taking up a lot of the space so we had a couple of rods sitting up on the side in here there's not really a lot of space for gear i know they do sell a um one thing that we've noticed as well is there's nowhere really to put phones nowhere dry anyway they sell like an underseat storage area so we're going to have to get onto them and order that because having somewhere to put your phones and other gear is going to be important uh, i didn't feel comfortable taking the drone out in it because there was nowhere to keep it safe and dry as well so if we can come up with a bit of a storage solution to store our important electronics on it that would be good but yeah that is one of the negatives is you get wet it takes water on the water clears right away so you're not going to sink but everybody gets wet on it and storage wise and space wise there's just not a lot of space for things uh yeah and we already covered the fact that you can put holes in it um so that's probably all of the negatives so Oh, you probably heard me whinging out there as well that I was fishing blind. I'm definitely missing some of my electronic gadgets as well. I'm missing having a sounder, uh, missing the electric motor as well. There's a couple of things that this is obviously just not going to have. But as far as um, uh, compromises go, it's pretty damn good. We're able to get out on the water. We're able to get out and explore. We're still going to be able to live our lives. So um, overall, I'm very happy with it. And if you're like us and you're in a situation where you don't have the weights for a boat, maybe one of these inflatables is an option for you. Right, it's half past three. Stop. I'll, I'll do it without food in my mouth. That's pretty bogan. Looks like this is going to be a team effort, hey Mel? Just bend over a little bit more. Sure. Lift That'll your hat make up. It go faster, Lift right? your hat up and bend over a bit more. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the technique. I'm worried about your posture. <laughs> this what did you just say, out. Owen? Owens are glad that we got fire. Orange is we got fire and I just had an orange. She said I'm a free man. Free to do just what I like. But I just don't seem to like what's new to me. Now I'm no one's man. And these streets that I've been walking, they make me feel like nothing.